Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Dom, and I'm going to help you learn all about uniting your frontline workers by using your internet. If you guys have any questions, uh, please use the GoToMeeting interface to submit them, as you can see there on the screen. I'll try my best to answer as many questions as I can at the very end, and we'll go from there. So why don't we begin? Uh, today, uh, as of 2019, uh, if, if most people already didn't know this, but almost all organizations are practicing some form of deskless work. I'm sure uh, most people on this call, as I'm looking through here, probably have quite a few people that are doing deskless work, so I'm sure you can all relate. Um, now, it could be retail, manufacturing, travel, or really anything else you can think of. Um, the number of people that actually don't sit at computers every day is, is quite a bit. It's a lot. Um, just take a look at the metric on the screen here. It's 3 billion people. So 80%, that means two out of 10 people are actually at a computer every day. Uh, what are we doing about the other eight? You know, what are you doing to make sure that both the eight and the two have equal easy access to the same documents, discussions, forums, news groups, and anything else that's relevant? Are you enabling the eight to do their jobs as well as possible? You know, with the way internet technology is evolving, it, it's more possible now than ever. Technology definitely existed in the past. I mean, internets have been around for a while, uh, but internets really weren't mature enough to be able to make that much of a difference. Archaic internets had like bad mobile experience, poor search, didn't render, render properly in all devices. But you know, technology is changing for the good. This evolution is allowing us to truly bring the world together like never before. So these remote employees, whether they're 200 feet away or 200 miles away. They're the face and soul of your organization. Think about that for a second. These people actually are the face and soul. Frontline workers are the first point of contact between your organization and the customers. The ones who spend their time managing operations, sharing products, and creating your actual customer experience. Yet, for some reason, more often than not, they remain an afterthought in many digital and internal communications efforts. So what happens? Frontline employees are the ones who we struggle to retain the most. That's what it comes down to. It should come no surprise that frontline workers are actually ranked among the lowest in terms of total motivation. And guess what? What can possibly happen because of this? It leads to turnover rate and decreased performance, and nobody likes that. So the question, the burning question plaguing organizations today is not only how to retain frontline workers, but how do you actually improve their performance? So today in this webinar, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through the challenges that frontline employees face, uh, why investing in your frontline actually matters, and how leveraging an internet can help with all of this. Out of those 3 billion deskless workers, 2 billion are in roles that make them the first point of contact between a company and the world it serves. If you think about it, that's 3,000 million people. People who stand on the front lines and deliver your services and manufacture your products, deal with your customers. It might be nurses in a healthcare facility, retail workers in your department store, nonprofit workers in the field, assembly line workers in your factory, or even managers who supervise all these individuals. Now, they typically make up a younger demographic. Uh, believe it or not, actually one third of those workers are under the age of 35. Ready for this one? 71% of non-desk workers are not actively engaged with their business. And, you know, when it comes down to it, there's really got to be more that we can do. 71%, that number needs to be lower. Remember, your frontline employees are really, really important. Now, think for a second of some of your really good and really bad customer service experiences. Those experiences that I'm sure you have a lot of stories that you can think of, are all 100% because of those frontline workers. Here's where things break down. No, what if those employees or your employees don't share your convictions? What if they wouldn't know your company mission statement if you read it to them off a poster board? Even worse, what if people's jobs are hindered by the fact that there's no vehicle for them to quickly read the information that they need? Distance can make people feel ignored, and feeling ignored makes people feel disengaged. And then we have that vicious cycle. An example of a disengaged employee could very well be 
that employee that gave you a bad customer service experience and made you think negatively about a specific company. Maybe you have a company, uh, for example, a car dealer that you always go to every three years. Why would you possibly go to the same car dealer every three years? Because the frontline salesman was very nice to you. And every time you go for service, they treat you like a king or a queen. These are the types of things that keep a business going. On the other side of things, if you had a bad experience with that car company, would you really want to go back? Now, according to ADP, having just one disengaged employee could cost the company at least $2,246 per year, but I'm sure that number is way higher. And disengaged employees can actually cost U.S. companies over $30 billion annually. That's billion with a P. So I think we've pretty much established the relevance and importance of those frontline employees. But now let's talk a little bit more about what you can do to support them. So in the next few slides, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through some of those common challenges that frontline workers face and, and how you could do, or what you could do to solve them. So frontline workers um, are usually based in dispersed locations away from headquarters. They're frequently on the road. Um, they usually have infrequent or no visit to headquarters whatsoever. Um, have limited or no access to a computer, have no access to information on the go, have little to no collaboration with other staff, or have no corporate accounts for email or cloud-based storage. Again, I'm sure most people on this call probably have a subset of workers that fill one or more of these different things. So really, one of the biggest causes of lack of engagement is isolation. Why? Usually, for the most part, just lack of support from management and C-level. Senior staff often tend to think that the front lines are running smoother than they actually are. Um, so according actually to total jobs, 60% of employees have felt lonely at work, and 68% of these say it impacts their stress levels. Those are pretty big numbers. And at the end of the day, nobody likes to be kept in the dark. Now, one of the bigger complaints among frontline staff is that senior leaders make changes to organizational structure or process without even informing them. And, you know, I'm sure we've all been there. And it stinks. It's, it's not a good feeling. Gaps that exist between frontline employees and their leaders stop organizations from reaching their full potential. Gaps in communication turn into gaps in understanding. These turn into gaps in trust. Now we went from simple miscommunications to gaps in trust. Now we got some problems. The window from sea level to frontline needs to be transparent, not translucent. To all leaders out there, it's important not to let frontline team members become out of sight and out of mind. Guess what? This is actually one of the fundamental reasons why intranets actually exist. So throw away that notion of out of sight, out of mind. Keep everybody on the same page. A modern internet allows access to everything, no matter the device. Leaders and staff can easily communicate company values, share news, updates, celebrate organizational successes, share important granular information, really anything that it comes down to. Internets allow that to happen. Break down those barriers, knock down those silos. If it's done correctly, everybody, no matter where they are or what they do, gets to be part of the show. So now let's take a look at our first case study, and this one is about Piedmont Healthcare. Let's give you a little bit of a quick background. Um, they are a rapidly growing health system of more than 18,300 employees located all throughout Georgia, uh, Georgia state. Uh, they saw difficulties arise due to poor remote access and lack of team collaboration provided by their legacy internet. So they needed to make a change. They had a company goal to, or have a company goal to make a positive difference in every life that they touch. But Piedmont struggled to create a thriving community where employees could connect, collaborate, and grow throughout their journey. So um, they needed to really make a change to help make that company goal more of a reality. And so in February of 2017, uh, they launched their internet and they called it The Village. So as part of the process, they did a user survey and the user, sur user survey identified four primary internet user personas, nurses, physicians, professionals, and remote workers. 
So the internet team actually took the time to understand the unique challenges and goals of each of those personas, and they translated those to an internet that would meet their needs. So a big challenge that we're gonna be looking at today is in lack of employer recognition. Now, when we're talking about employer recognition, we're talking about motivation, um, retaining and fully engaging our employees. So unfortunately, as of today, it's one of the biggest challenges for those companies with large numbers of frontline workers. According to Bamboo HR, 82% of employees don't think they're recognized for their work as often as they deserve, 82%. The impact can be very significant. Now, maybe there are some workers out there that if you give them employee recognition, they don't really care. And on the other side of the coin, um, not getting employee recognition, they don't really care either. Uh, but for the most part, when people do a good job, they want to be told so. Um, if they stay late to work on a project, uh, if there was at a retail store a really bad accident and one of your managers stayed six hours late and didn't really even ask for overtime uh, just to keep the store running the next day, you know, these are the types of things that at the very least an email would be nice, right? Just to say, hey, you did a really good job. Thanks for that. Uh, you know, just imagine... Just imagine working really hard at something and nobody even saying thank you. Um, what would happen? You know, your productivity would drop, uh, your motivation would probably take a hit, right? Your satisfaction would start to bottom out um, and you wouldn't probably enjoy working there as much. Now, of course, that might not happen every time, but if it keeps happening, um, this sort of thing can start accumulating. And then what happens? You have a somebody or a worker that doesn't feel like they're appreciated. They're going to start creating a toxic environment. Think back to that bad customer service experience. Think back to that car company that you'll never buy a car from again because the salesperson was rude. Service was awful. Um, maybe all of that happened. Maybe not, but maybe all that happened because no matter what type of job that they do, nobody from corporate really cares. So they're just there to collect their paychecks and go home. According to Burson and Associates, companies with good recognition programs have 31% lower voluntary employee turnover. So almost a one third difference. There's another study that states that spending 1% or more on payroll, that's literally 1% of payroll on recognition services helps 85% of companies see improved engagement. So when we're talking about ROI, talking about just taking 1% of payroll and almost making a 100% difference. I mean, that's, you can't even argue that. It's the responsibility of senior managers to make sure that employees are both fulfilled by their work and happy in their environment. Remember, your employees are your most valuable asset. Without them, you would basically have nothing. You'd have no business, you'd have no livelihood. So replacing them is not the right mindset. They're too important. Just try to make them happy. You know, every time you have a problem, you shouldn't try to fix it with another problem. <laughs> Just fix the problem itself. But too many times leaders are too far removed from employees to do this kind of thing, right? I know I've been talking how, impo how important recognition is, um, but it's very difficult to achieve a lot of times because there's a lot of barriers, right? It could be a physical barrier, a level of seniority barrier, a communications barrier because of the systems you have in place or whatever the issue is. Um, and recognition is a challenge. So where an internet comes in, it, it, it really erases these challenges and makes things easier to do. It'll empower leaders and staff alike uh, to create a culture of recognition. And, and this will really answer that challenge. So it'll create that culture by incorporating rewards, having social tools, and even having maybe different types of information flows. And all of this together makes it super easy to give peer-to-peer -peer recognition. And as you can see from, this, from the graphic here, Peer-to-peer uh, -peer recognition is 36% more likely to have a positive impact on financial results than just manager only. So let's take a look at another example. Uh, it's another case study uh, that I think you guys will find interesting, uh, Midpen Housing. So they're one of the U.S.'s leading nonprofit developers, owners, and managers of high-quality affordable housing. So as you'd imagine, the staff are super widely dispersed. Um, a lot of them working on the front line with families, the community, or in development. So what MidPen did, um, they utilized an internal recognition program called iCare to promote its five core company values. 
integrity, collaboration, accountability, respect, and excellence. And they did this to acknowledge employees who exhibit them. But unfortunately, the program was not achieving its desired results. One complaint uh, was the fact that nominations were anonymous, uh, countering the goal of recognizing employees. Fewer than 5% of employees were actually acknowledged through the program each year, so it, it just wasn't working. Um, MidPen decided to partner with Interact to deliver their internal communications platform, Lighthouse, um, being a beacon for each and every employee. And they decided to use our reward and recognition functionality. It presented an opportunity to replace the existing employee recognitions program with a single solution, and they went for it. The way it works, every employee receives 20 virtual keys uh, each month to award to peers. They're allowed to do whatever they want with them. They can give them to whomever, however many, and for whatever reason. Each time a key is given, it's made public. Uh, keys could then be redeemed for gift cards, furthering the reward for exceptional attitudes, behaviors, and work ethic. Um, employees are actually incentivized to reward all 20 keys each month by being entered to a monthly draw, so it's something that they actually want to do. So, what's and, and this is amazing, since implementing keys use, utilizing our rewards feature, MidPen Housing has seen employer recognition increase from just 1% or five employees annually to incredible 94% or 414 employees. So recognition uh, being one challenge, um, and here's another, employees not having a voice. Enforced radio silence. Um, this is yet another toxic policy that just manifests frustration, agitation, and animosity. Giving your staff a voice is much more important than simply giving them the opportunity to speak their mind. Okay, it's about setting up channels or processes that allow them to be actively involved in decision making and influence this direction of your organization. So these are, remember, these are people that have been sometimes doing jobs for 20, 25, 30 years. Um, conversely, being that a lot of them are younger, maybe they're only doing it for five, 10 years, maybe even younger than that. But being able to tap into the minds of those who are in the weeds every day um, will prove critical to resolving challenges and keeping your organization evolving and growing. Who knows your business better than those in the field delivering your goods or services? Staff on the front lines are most likely to spot issues and efficiencies. If poor processes are left unspotted, it's going to come out in the entire organization's pocket, plain and simple. Now, why wouldn't you want to give these people a channel to share their opinions? So for all those people that work on the front lines, it's the social internet that really gives them their voice. This is the place where they can share issues, post ideas, collaborate with similar workers, get advice, give advice, and learn. So are you thinking that your workers don't have a laptop? So what? Remember we talked in the beginning of the webinar that internets are changing and becoming more mobile friendly than ever. So why can't you leverage that? You know, imagine a world where a frontline worker can ask a really crucial question and get an answer within a couple of minutes or maybe like a half an hour. Forums give employees the opportunity to do just that. Ask those questions, start discussions, share thoughts. They're also very powerful for innovation, um, where somebody can actually propose an idea and have others vote, comment, and contribute. You know, the idea of an annual company-wide survey is completely outdated. You know, if you're still using them, the truth is you're, you're years behind. And enter poll surveys. What a poll survey does, it asks short, concise, and specific questions on a regular basis and it allows employees to efficiently put their opinion across on organizational changes, company news, and more. Then you got your champions. So think of your champions as those people who are your all-stars, um, your frontline people that you trust the most. You know, maybe you allow them extended privilege in the internet and they're allowed to write articles and post blogs. Champions make other frontline employees feel like they have an advocate nearby or an advocate that at the very least is on their level. Really nice uh, case study for this example is Mattress Firm, which we're going to get into now. I have most, probably everybody in this call has heard of Mattress Firm. Um, they're, they're based in Texas and Houston um, with over 3,500 stores in nearly 50 states. Uh, they have four corporate headquarters and more than 10,000 workers. So interesting to see what they're going to do. Um, and it was really important uh, and was a really important challenge for them to facilitate two-way communication. Um, so what their communications department decided to do um, was incorporate discussion boards. 
And what the discussion boards did was they allowed people to submit, or employees rather, to submit ideas and everything from process improvements to product improvements and how-to advice, et cetera. The form is called Great Ideas. And after they implemented it, it resulted in more than 250 threads and nearly, or rather, over 8,500 visits to Great Ideas in the first six months of launch. A couple of months went by and Match's firm took notice of Randy an in-store expert and a very active member of the Great Ideas Forum. He often posted with the answers to pressing questions and fantastic insights to the implementation of specific ideas and processes. So he was just overall a really important and integral part of the internet. He was always helping people out. Mattress Firm saw that and you know, recognizing that Randy was already setting himself up to be a spectacular internal communications influencer, um, the comm teams reached out to him and co coached him on his or rather on their communications tone, uh, gave him guidance on stock answers that he could use to share his ideas, connected him with content managers that he could assist with questions he didn't already have access to, and really made him a champion. That's what they did. Um, became a power user or champion, I mean, whichever way you want to say it, um, conversed with his associates across organization via the internet, and built a reputation of transparency and authentic authenticity in their uh, online community. So because his views aren't seen as carpet jargon, uh, his colleagues actually relate to him, value his perspective, and express their opinions and feel free to voice questions to him. Connecting staff is another challenge. So traditionally, frontline workers have very little opportunity to engage and collaborate with their peers who they never met. Over the past decade, digital workplace tools have popped up here and there, but there really isn't much that helped with workplace isolation. In fact, 85% of staff say the communication they receive on the job is not enough, according to staff base. But luckily for you and luckily for me, um, intranets exist. And how can intranet help? It's pretty simple. What the intranet does is it creates a sense of community and it allows employees to feel closer to the organization. Look, you know, we, we, we've, we've talked about this you know, quite extensively for the past 15, 20 minutes, but your frontline employees would probably never know the names and roles of their colleagues hundreds of miles away, and that's understandable. You know, how would they? But as we discussed, the isolation could be selling off very important conversations and limiting your business from going in the right direction. So on the screen, we have some modules that are going to be very useful in combating that isolation. Uh, first being people directory, which gives employees the chance to know each other, you know, regardless of location. Collaborative team spaces, which promote collaboration and provide a platform of groups of common interests. So it could be anything from an interdepartmental project group uh, to maybe every regional manager that they want to have a place to collaborate. It could be something like a Game of Thrones group or an after work soccer group. It doesn't have to be fully corporate. It could be more fun and engaging just to pull people in. Then there's different social features. Like, you know, the ability to like and share posts, help remove traditional workplace barriers of unfriendliness. Uh, it does a lot of different things, social features. You know, just imagine using, just imagine rather, uh, using Instagram or Facebook, but for work. And that's really what we're trying to do. Then we have employee blogs. A nice informal way for staff to share stories uh, and talk about different issues that they're passionate about. A good example of this particular thing is TravelX. TravelX is one of the world's leading foreign exchange providers. 37,000 customers around the world, 1,400 locations, 70 countries. If you've ever been to an international airport, I'm pretty sure you've seen them before. They're the ones that have those kiosks to the side that help you exchange money. That's TravelX. So TravelX partnered with Interact to connect its global workforce and help instill a common unified culture around the world uh, through their internet called The Lounge. They've seen a ton of success through the use of blogs. Um, and it's something that they're continuing to do. Blogging has allowed TravelX to create the highly active global community they have today. So the reason why they're doing so well on a global community standpoint is because of blogs. There's posts from senior leadership and even personal stories from retail workers. So believe it or not, the lounge actually averages 11 blogs a day, and they even have an annual blog of the year award. So last year, it was given to a sales consultant who achieved over 400 likes for a personal blog posted on the site. 
you know, this this whole travel X case study really should help reframe the way that you think about internal comms and maybe reframe the way that you think about um, top-down communication. Uh, not every organization will want to use blogs like this, uh, but it, this is a clear example. I mean, people are blogging all around the world and they just feel closer. And it, it worked really, really well. Another challenge we're gonna go through today is limited access to timely information. So I th actually think out of everything we're, we're gonna talk to or talk about today, uh, this is by far the most crucial. Frontline employees need direct, consistent, and real-time communications from their organization in order to, to better do their jobs. So an inability to access timely information can result in inefficiencies, frustration, poor customer experience. Remember, we were talking about that bad customer service experience from before. This is another reason why. Maybe people just don't have the information that they need. And an increase in health and safety incidents. Uh, that's way more serious than the other ones, but you know it's definitely a possibility. And, and the list goes on and on for the different reasons or the different things that limited access can create. Um, by the way, email is not sufficient. Um, yeah, a lot of us check our emails, but a lot of people don't check their emails, maybe like we do. So how do you make company information easily accessible? You know, what can you do? As I'm sure you probably already guessed, you can implement a mobile-friendly internet. A mobile internet can do a lot of things. So to start, simple and easy authentication, including biometric verification, push notifications, which your employees will see right away, easy to access uh, important documentation, including policies, documents, and enterprise search functionality, and a people directory, easy to zero in on the right resource. And let's take a look at what Wabco has done. Wabco is a leading global supplier of technology and services that improve safety, efficiency, and connectivity of their commercial vehicles. 15,000 people, 55 different languages, that's 5-5. Five, five. So clearly they wanted to improve connectivity, collaboration and communication across all staff. So they launched their internet at PACE in 2017. Being that there's 55 languages, they knew that adoption was gonna be their biggest hurdle. So they invested actually pretty heavily in a launch campaign that would educate and excite everyone. By educating staff on how to use their internet effectively, uh, what Wabco did was actually empower employees to find their own new ways to share and collaborate. There was one content area in particular that was really successful called excellence and execution. And what it is is just a, a meeting point for staff to share their accomplishments and findings. In just six months, uh, the area saw engagement from over 600 employees who generated more than 8,300 entries. Across PACE as a whole, or excuse me, at PACE as a whole, uh, the team saw really, really outstanding and impressive numbers or engagement numbers in the first year. Over 255,000 employee visits, um, over 2,300 articles published, 200 discussion forums, and over 60 team project and group spaces. When there's a geographical divide between staff and organization, the business must really turn to technology to close the gap. Um, technology exists, and why not use it? But the technology is there, and I say, why not use it? But really, how prepared are organizations to actually work differently and use technology more? Um, now, the use of cloud-based apps has grown considerably. Um, workforces, or the workforce, rather, is definitely more digitally empowered and interconnected than it was. However, you know, when your employees are scattered across different locations, it's really challenging to, to actually see whether or not people have access to the correct information that they need. Um, and far worse, it's difficult to see whether or not people are seeing information that they're not supposed to see at all, and maybe the information is classified. Um, as we're becoming more and more technological, um, as this is more of a mobile and digital world, identity and access management is more crucial than ever. 20 years ago, you had your simple server desktop scenario where it's really easy to shut people out from things. Um, not as easy, still easy, but not as easy as it was. And you need to make sure you take the right steps. So up until this point where we're talking about internets, we're talking about all the things that it could do. Um, and, and we're also now still talking about something that an internet can do, but this is more of a backend thing. Um, and, and really what a secure internet can do is really ensure that temps, frontline staff, or just remote users in general, are afforded access to only the information that they're supposed to see. So for instance, um, what Interact does is it gives you a lot of options to keep things safe. So single sign-on is one of those things. And what SSO, 
uh, single sign-on SSO, uh, allows organizations to do is limit access to the internet by leveraging ADFS, Okta, or one login credentials. Not to really get too complicated, but just know that with, inter with Interact, click a button, automatically logs you in, don't really have to worry about logging in over and over again. Um, and then what we could also do is actually incorporate your Active Directory and Azure Directory profiles and permissions. So even also within Interact itself, so we have your single sign-on, you have Active Directory, which those permissions are already set up and we can grandfather them in, grandfather them in into Interact. You can also have permissions in Interact itself. Um, you can establish an unlimited number of security groups based off work groups, physical location, or any other group you can think of, um, and then designate specific granular permissions on the internet based off those groups. So um, let's say you have a marketing team in Europe and you don't want them to see marketing for whatever reason, you don't want them to see marketing things in South America. Um, if you create a marketing South America group, marketing Europe group, you could disallow the South America group from seeing the Europe group and you're done. Now, might not be a great example, but you sort of get the picture where it's really easy to block people off based off putting them in groups. Good example uh, of a nonprofit that that worked through these issues is Family Service League um, with their internet, The Hive. Did you guys know that a large portion of the nonprofit workforce actually operates on a volunteer basis? Because of the flexible nature of their roles, volunteers encounter challenges accessing information, knowing who to share confidential data with, and remembering logins for different systems, uh, among other things. So these challenges then bolster management's refusal to take on additional help. Once volunteers realize that supporting and recruiting staff members is not a priority, they're going to run away like a dog in a vacuum factory. Family Service League has taken nice strides to prevent this. Uh, with over 700 staff spanning over 100 miles, uh, Family Service League understood uh, the challenges associated with unifying its front line, um, being that more than half of their staff work out in the field. Following a survey, uh, they identified a couple of things. One, need to improve communication across the agency. Two, facilitate better staff collaboration. And three, ensure that all staff had easy access to agency information. You know, pretty cut and dry, right? I mean, that's why internets exist and, and that's why they launched the Hive, their internet in 2018. Now, to make sure that people had access to the correct things and not to the incorrect things, um, they fully populated and synced their internet with Active Directory. And they did a couple of cool things. They used photos from staff ID badges to put onto the profiles. Um, they also added in expertise and interest, which is really cool too. So if you want to look for somebody that speaks a specific language or that has the same uh, interest as you, you, you could do that at the internet. Um, and also what a steer committee did, um, steer committee of stakeholders from the executive team, uh, they created a comprehensive governance model and made sure that responsibilities, permissions, and guidance for use were out there and were well taken. Uh, one month after launching the Hive, Family Service League then configured the Hive as a portal. So I know a lot of you out there like using the internet as a portal. I think it's a great idea. Um, and they created icon-led shortcuts to most used websites and apps. Doing this uh, drove usage from 55% on day one to 86% one month in. Today, they still see an average of about 75% usage. Here's another thing that a lot of organizations struggle with, crisis communications. And by crisis comms, we mean how are you getting the word out as quickly and efficiently as possible? When staff are dispersed and hard to reach, whether on the shop floor, on the road, or working remotely, reaching them during times of need or crisis is critical. Timely distribution of emergency protocols, uh, confirming staff safety, and management of response efforts becomes increasingly tricky when you have a large workforce who aren't office or desk-based. In addition, uh, those on the front line are far more likely to spot and be impacted by a potential crisis situation. To manage comms and distribute information in high pressure situations, uh, email is just not enough. Introducing different methods of comms that better suit your mobile staff is really a good way to ensure that they're, keep in the, that they're kept in the loop, no matter where they are. So how can the internet help? Your internet can be the central point of information for employees on a day-to-day -day basis, and if utilized correctly, can serve as a powerful platform for content distribution and crisis management. Your internet can host important documents like emergency protocols, procedure policies, and documentation crucial for safety management. And you can make these pages mandatory reads. You can ensure that people have actually read them, and then you can actually run reports to see the people that aren't reading any of your, 
mandatory reads. You can even use intranet broadcasts uh, as an employee alert system to notify staff when urgent communication is required and keep them updated as events unfold, like we saw just now on that graphic. Uh, Interact allows you to send broadcasts via SMS, like so things like bad weather, an unexpected office closure, even spontaneous business changes would all be a great use case. Did you know that 90% of text messages are read within three minutes? Um, so because they're read so quickly, using an SMS would be you know, a really good way to get crisis comms out. And why don't we even take it one thing further? You know, why should you just rely on one method of communication? Why just SMS? You know, why not also utilize push? Maybe display a banner. Maybe send out emails, send out texts, uh, do everything. Do as much as you possibly can. Why don't we take a closer look at Warchild? So Warchild has about 80 staff in its headquarters in London, uh, and they have on the ground of paid and volunteer workers all around the world. Uh, Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Yemen, Central African Republic, and the DRC, Democratic Republic of the Congo. They were under a lot of pressure to operate within budget, yet still ensure that maximum amount of support reach children. So to support them and to support their cause, uh, they rolled out their internet affiliates across all their different global offices. It was a lot of those people working in high risk environments, as you've heard some of those countries that I just mentioned, um, staff safety was of utmost extreme importance. And Phileas became a critical communication channel for the organization to keep staff informed, uh, particularly in times of crisis. Do your frontline workers have access to the essential technology and tools that can help them be as productive as possible? So up until this point, uh, we talked about comms, and we talked about employee recognition and getting the word out and discussions uh, and information sharing. But what about actual being productive? Uh, in your offices, uh, your actual HQ offices, um, employees are more likely to be digitally enabled than your workers on the front lines. But you need to get everybody on the same playing field. There's a ton of software apps available to help with project management and scheduling tasks. Now, Interact can integrate with nearly all of them, no matter what the productivity application or document management system is. All of your digital tools can be theoretically in one easy location. Now, in Interact, it's also very easy to set up electronic forms of workflows um, and do some other things, uh, like we see there on the screen, like swapping shifts, requesting time off, viewing schedules, um, even managing tasks and increasing productivity that way. But really, what it's trying to do is improve accuracy and quality of information across your whole organization. Kent Community Health NHS Foundation is home to more than 5,500 staff that provide 70 different services to over 2 million patients in the southeast of England. Kent deployed Interact to connect distributed teams, uh, teams all over the place, give clinicians fast access to information they need, and share knowledge and best practices that improve patient care. Clinical staff at Kent Community Health can find clinical information, forms, uh, and other resources much more quickly with added keywords and best bets, which make commonly used and searched content even easier to find. The team also streamlined content across the site to speed up navigation. What about uh, training and upskilling? According to a Hay Group report, uh, the turnover rate for hourly employees is the highest it's ever been since the Great Recession at an astounding 65%. Although some of the blame can be placed on things like poor scheduling, low pay, or some of the other things we were talking about earlier, um, training and career advancement are probably the biggest contributors. So what can an internet do? Um, today's customers are smart. To stay ahead of them, frontline employees need to be well-informed if they want to perform and ultimately advance in their organizations. So due to the deskless circumstance, the traditional approach to learning won't do for frontline staff. Uh, instead, training and development initiatives must become mobile and flexible uh, as the workforce becomes more mobile and flexible. This brings us to Magic Memories and their internet click. So they're specialists in global tourism, um, Magic Memories are, and they beat the odds of their dispersed staff and turn their internet into a system that grew uh, both organization and employee. Their legacy system was only meeting the needs of around 40% of their 2,500 person workforce. A lack of engagement was widespread and their reputation for making people smile was suffering. So their new internet click, so Magic Memories put a lot of effort into creating a global learn leadership program that not only connected employees, but also enhanced them. Okay. 
Click was transformed into a virtual learning college that proved to be highly productive and cost efficient. Bonjour, hola, ciao, privet. You may or may not be a bilingual speaker, and I definitely am not either. I just know how to say hello in many languages. <laughs> but we can guarantee that a percentage of employees on the front line actually are bilingual. Now, across the globe, out in the field, your frontline workers have been living and operating in a number of diverse locations, not all of which are English speaking or whatever your main language is. With distance already a major factor in employee isolation and dissatisfaction, adding a language barrier just makes things worse. How can your staff expect to relate and collaborate and communicate with colleagues they can't even understand? An internet can help with this. When planning to offer your internet in more than one language, you need to consider that all resources are required to maintain your content in multiple languages. Um, managing languages takes a lot of work, uh, but the good thing is Interact actually has a lot of features that makes it easy. So you can have product language in different, uh, for different groups. Um, so for example, if you have uh, a bunch of marketing people or HR people in France, uh, you can, assign all of those people to a French speaking group and the product will be in French for them. There's also on page translation for social features. Um, and then you can also even have all content published in separate languages just by typing it out in that specific language. The International Rescue Committee, IRC, is a global nonprofit that offers emergency aid to refugees and those displaced by war, persecution, or natural disaster. They have 11,000 nonprofit staff in over 40 countries speaking 19 different languages. So as you'd imagine, creating that collective culture was a challenge. Um, many who constantly travel or perform on the ground work in refugee camps, they definitely don't have access to a laptop, don't have a desk, and their old internet left them unsupported. Um, it lacked social elements, it lacked mobile capabilities, and it lacked translation functionality. So to counter this and to make things better, IRC took advantage of Interact's blogging feature on their internet rescue net. Uh, staff were able to write stories in their native language and share their stories with users across the globe. RescueNet unearthed inspiring stories that demonstrated the passion of its employees, uh, regardless of location, culture, or language. So just imagine being able to read a blog about somebody that saved a whole family in Syria or somebody that did something uh, just as amazing. You might not have access to seeing that information right now, but with an internet with blogging, um, you could really see the life-changing things that your organization is doing uh, right there in front of you. So just as a quick recap, um, the frontline workers, you know, they're the first point of contact for all your customer interactions. Um, they're really important to your business, but the work isn't easy. And without the proper support and attention, uh, these employees cannot work efficiently. So offsetting these problems uh, will require companies to invest time, effort, and resources necessary to empower their frontline staff. By giving frontline employees more self-sufficiency and capability through internet technology, you improve not only their productivity, but also their motivation to succeed. For an important set of employees like the frontline, uh, inspired, engaged, and high-performing employees push better client relations encourage customer loyalty, ultimately grow the positive reputation of your organization. Take care of them, because if you take care of them, they'll definitely take care of you, and your organization will be seen as better. So we're up to questions, but it looks like I ran a little bit too long on the slide, so I can't get to all of them, just reading through some of them here. Um, so I'm definitely going to make sure everybody gets these slides, because I know a lot of these questions here are asking about the slides. I will send the slides over to everybody that was on this call today. Uh, and any other questions, I see there's a few, um, I will definitely follow up or get somebody to follow up with you on these questions. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for taking the time to learn about the frontline employees. Uh, hope everybody found it helpful, and I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day.